Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to create this Game of Thrones dragon egg cake. This video is in collaboration with the awesome Jenny Sweets. Don't forget to check out her awesome Game of Thrones cake tutorial at the end of this one. To create this cake you need a um, an egg mold. This one here was something that I bought during Easter at a cake decorating shop, but you can find them online as well. I filled it with some compound chocolate by Nestle that I've melted down. And I'm moving the mold around so that the chocolate comes up and over the edge of the uh, cavity. Once it's nicely coated, pour that chocolate back into the container or into a plate. And then clear up the sides with your bench scraper or a metal spatula. Once that's done, pop it into the freezer to set completely. And work on a second mold so you'll have two halves that complete the egg. I'll also note that it's a lot easier or um, a lot thicker of an eggshell if you let your chocolate sit at room temperature once melted just for a couple of minutes so it has time to thicken up and that way it creates a much uh, denser shell and it's a lot more stable for your cake as well. Again just pouring out the excess, cleaning it up with your spatula, just going around the uh, across the edges of the cavity and then back into the freezer. Once it's set, go ahead and do a second layer. This layer I kind of focused more so towards the edge of the cavity because I wanted it to create a much thicker um, outside line just there where I'm putting the chocolate and that way the thicker it is the more you have to work with when you're um, gluing it together. Once that's set in the freezer, it takes only about 10 minutes or so, pipe in some buttercream. The best kind of frosting to use for this project would be a chocolate ganache or a hard setting um, or crusting buttercream just because it holds together a lot better. Put on your cake and then again with the buttercream layer and with my spatula just smoothing that down and make sure that when you build your cake it doesn't come up and over the um, edge of your shell. So you want it to be underneath the, um, the sort of level. Pop it out of your mold. Just by pressing on one side, usually it kind of slides right out. You don't need to put anything in the mold like um, oil or anything, it'll just come right off. And with some melted chocolate just around the perimeter of your casing to stick on the second half. I went with some buttercream as well. You can add a much more buttercream as well um, to help it to all stick together. Pop it in line with, just meet it up it together and then with some more chocolate just going around again that section where they meet and reinforcing it with some more melted chocolate you might want to do another layer of this in case and with a round metal tip that I've run under some hot water I'm just creating a hole at the very bottom of the cake this is where it's going to sit with um, the dowel inside the cake now because it's not an easy standing cake you do have to make a bit of a support system here I have some MDF board and a 6mm diameter dowel and it's a 6mm hole as well so it's really snug and tight in there. Gluing two of these discs with some chocolate, you can just drill a hole into some wood, works the same way, and then glue it to your cake board with some hot glue or some super glue, hot glue would be best, and then just place it right over the top and make sure it's stuck on there. Now because it is super glue, you do want to create a decent barrier between that and your edible decorations. So I've got some chocolate and I'm going around the dowel, the base and also where the two meet with the um, cake board. I'm also putting a layer of fondant over the top as well. This is pretty much here just to create a bit of wave for when we put our final um, fondant over the top. And it also creates a secondary barrier between the cake and the dowel and all the um, stuff underneath. So kind of create those pleats by raising that fondant and pinching it. And then cut across the, um, the edge of the cake board. Glue it down with some water just along the edges. And then pop your cake on top. For extra stability, you could use two dowels instead or a much thicker dowel as well. This worked out perfectly, but for added support, because it was wobbling a little bit, just use a thicker dowel. Now I've got a small rose petal cutter and I'm cutting out fondant in gold by America Gel Food Color. 
and I am sticking it onto the cake just with a little bit of water brushed onto the petal. At the top you want to push them to be a lot closer together so you can't see through to the chocolate shell. As you can see here they're all touching at the very top and then just add your layers of fondant as you go around in between each previous um, two petals. A quick tip here is to let your fondant um, rest for at least 10 minutes on the counter before you attach them onto your egg and to also roll out the fondant to be a little bit thicker. This just helps your um, petals to maintain their shape. If they're too soft or if they're too thin then they end up kind of molding around the two previous petals and you get a bit of a um, bit of a wedge or a bit of a bump at the bottom. So to make them look like they're an individual scale let them rest and cut them a bit thicker. To create the paint I've got some rose spirit cake decorating um, it's kind of like an alcohol and then mix it in with some rose gold by creative cake decorating. You can also use vinegar or a lemon extract and with a large blush brush I am painting it all over the cake. And I did two layers just to make sure it all um, looked nice and dense. For the layer of fondant at the bottom I've just cut a line so that I can fit it around my egg and then creating large pleats underneath as well. And because we have that second layer of fondant underneath it helps this last layer of fondant to remain risen and make it look a lot more like uh, material. Cut off the excess and then I just went around the steamer just along the bottom to remove any excess cornstarch or icing sugar and what I thought looked really nice is just using that leftover paint and going over the raised areas. And that's how you make a golden dragon egg slash Game of Thrones dragon egg cake. Thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Aside from the mechanics that go into the whole thing, standing, it's actually a pretty easy cake. If you have a drill on hand, fantastic. If you are under the age of 18 or uncomfortable with using a drill, make sure that you have an adult do it for you. And that's the story for this Tuesday. This video is actually in collaboration with Jenny Sweets. Don't forget to check out her awesome version of a Game of Thrones cake on the little screen here or the link in the description box below. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll catch you guys next time. To cut this cake, you probably want to remove the shell because the shell is too hard to cut through. Then you would just serve it as is. Alternatively, what you can do is you can eat directly out of the shell, like my darling brother who just couldn't wait. <laughs>